Okay, so up to now, we've been discussing antiderivatives. But this course is not called antiderivatives, but integral calculus. So what's the connection? Well, there it is. So the indefinite integral of a function, and here's how to denote it. So again, this stretched out S stands for integral. So this reads the integral of f of x dx. This is called the indefinite integral, and all this is is the collection of all antiderivatives of f of x. So if we write integral of f of x dx, this is equal to connecting now our notion of antiderivatives, so uppercase f of x, if upper uppercase f of x has a derivative lowercase f of x, so if uppercase f is an antiderivative of lowercase f of x, but we're not looking for, again, just one antiderivative of lowercase f of x, we're looking for all such antiderivatives, and this is what the indefinite integral represents. All antiderivatives of lowercase f of x. But we have just proved in the previous video, if you find one antiderivative of lowercase f of x, all the other antiderivatives can be obtained from the one you found plus an arbitrary constant c. And that is the indefinite integral. It's simply asking for all functions whose derivative is equal to the original function. Granted here, this notation might look rather strange. Why do we use this bizarre stretched out s? Why do we use a dx? Don't worry about this right now. Take this for granted, and later on, we'll consider the so-called definite integral, and then we'll see why this notation, although it looks bizarre right now, actually is very intuitive and makes perfect sense. But for now, just think of it this way. The indefinite integral of f of x is denoted by integral sine f of x dx, and all it is is the collection of all antiderivatives of lowercase f of x. And that is the indefinite integral of f. Now, let's just look at this quickly to realize that this really is the inverse operation of differentiation. So we'll look at if we integrate the derivative and if we differentiate the integral, that they cancel each other out. So integration is the inverse of differentiation. Integration for us right now is the action of taking the indefinite integral of a function. So integration is the inverse of differentiation. And now let's look at why this makes perfect sense. So let's take a function. Suppose we have f, and we differentiate it, which gives us f prime of x, and now we will integrate it, so integrate the derivative of f dx. What is this equal to? Well, we are asking for all functions whose derivative is the derivative of f of x. Hmm, let me restate that again. We are looking for all antiderivatives of the original function. So what function has as its derivative the derivative of f of x? Well, it obviously is f of x. If you differentiate the answer, you're supposed to get the original function. Well, clearly, if you differentiate f, you get the derivative of f. Don't forget though that we're not looking for just one antiderivative, but all antiderivatives, so we add an arbitrary constant. And so you see, what did we do here? We had f of x, we took its derivative, and then we integrated, and what happened? We got back the function f up to a constant, 
But if you ignore the constant for now, by differentiating f, and then by integrating it, nothing happened. Again, up to a constant. What if we do the opposite? What if we start with f, and then we'll do the same thing but in the opposite order. We will integrate f, and then we will take its derivative with respect to x. Let's see what comes out of this. If we are correct, we should get back the function. Well, let's see. The derivative of, we can replace the integral of f of x dx by its antiderivative form, so uppercase f of x plus c, where of course uppercase f is an antiderivative of lowercase f. Let's differentiate. So we get the derivative of f of x with respect to x plus the derivative of c with respect to x, but this is just f prime of x, and the derivative of c with respect to x, but c is just an arbitrary constant. The derivative of a constant is of course zero, so we're left with the derivative of f, but by definition, when you write the integral of f of x dx is uppercase f of x plus c, f is an antiderivative of lowercase f, and so the derivative of our answer is the original function. So f uppercase f prime of x is lowercase f of x. And this is what we hoped for. We took the function, we integrated first, then we differentiated, and nothing happened. And that is why integration is the inverse of differentiation. If you take a function f, differentiate, then integrate, nothing happens up to a constant. If you integrate the function, then differentiate, nothing happens. That is why we say that integration is the inverse operation of differentiation. 